So we are exploring flaky skin. Now, you can buy products specifically to create chap lips, etc. Or you can just do it yourself. So I'm going to show you how to do it yourself. And it's, it's a very simple, very, very, very simple effect. Really easy to do. You're going to need your takeaway container. As we know, all my kits are at the, they're in town in the studio. So unfortunately, I've had to make do with my stay at home kit by Treasure House. And then some things I have around the house. And as I don't have any mixing palettes, lids means you reuse them, you recycle. Although these things are supposed to be recyclable, I'm always a bit dubious because it doesn't actually have a recycling thing on it. So I don't know if you can or you can't. So I always give it a nice spray with my IPA, just make sure there's no grease on it. We're gonna be doing, the other thing you're gonna need is your Meron liquid makeup. Okay, I'm using the clear one. It looks white, but it does go clear. It doesn't have any color. And just a cosmetic sponge. Now, I don't use the sponge in one. I break it up to give me a rough edge. Now, I do that because I want to make sure that, um, one second, I just need to tell people I'm live. People, oh gosh, I nearly dropped you. There we are. People want to know apparently these things so that they seem to be enjoying. Um, you say we are live. We are live. Oops. So they seem to be enjoying these videos, which is lovely. So there we go. Um, we, oops, we are live. Now, a lot of you um, will be going back to work now. So I won't expect that many people to join, but if you are joining me, fabulous, right. So Meron liquid, liquid, liquid latex, takeaway lid and a cosmetic sponge, break it in half. That's the edge you want to be using, okay? See that raggedy edge? That's because you're gonna create uneven skin textures, which is what the real skin is about. So I'm going to give myself a dry nose for now. So, a bit of liquid latex onto my pot. There we go, just that much, okay. Latex tends to dry, so I, I, I tend to work, less is more when you're working it. Remember, when you're losing latex, it can stain clothes, like like any makeup. So just, you know, don't be too precious about what you're wearing. Right, jagged edge. Not too much. I need a mirror, where's my mirror? Get my mirror. Sorry, I wasn't very prepared today because I've been running a bit late. I, as I said, I went into town and I got a bit delayed. Right, there we go. Oh. Now, this is a very realistic, but very simple effect. You stip all the latex, mind your edges. If it starts sticking together, like it just did there, that's perfect. Because that's gonna form part of our dry up skin. So I want you to stipple away. As we're only gonna do one layer of latex, it needs to be really lovely and thin and even. I'm all thumb, oh, I'm all thumbs today, I'm telling you. I caught the train today, very exciting, caught the train. Went out. What's the best? Mm, so this is an interesting one. Um, I wouldn't use a barrier cream. Barrier creams are too thick. You could use a barrier spray, like a primer. Um, or airbrush a primer. Creams, okay, anything you add on on, onto the skin is going to have an element of grease to protect the skin. Now, because of that, latex is not going to be too happy with you. So, you just need to judge the amount of latex you're going to be using and how much um, how much that person's skin is affected by irritants. I personally wouldn't use anything because you want the skin to be completely clear so that the latex sticks to the skin and, and or prosthetics stick to the skin. 
Uh, you can use, Jack, Jay, the only problem with primers and latex is the primer tends to be grease. It will have an element of grease or silicon. Now silicon and latex do not work together. They will, con they will cancel each other out. Grease is fine. I would use normally a primer spray. Like, a, like you can go primer sprays. Meron, we've got a primer spray and it's just a little bit thinner. Ideally, nothing. But if you want to protect the skin because that person has very sensitive skin, then a primer spray. Try to avoid silicon primers. Silicon and latex, as I said, you can never mix silicon and latex. They cancel each other. And with glue, if you're, if you're sticking prosthetics to a person, um, glue will not stick to primers. So suddenly you've put the prosthetic on, you've stuck it down and you find it starts lifting. No problem. Water-based spray, yeah, that's good. Uh, just as a point of reference, when they were doing um, the, the character uh, Red Skull in Captain America, my, my mentor and very good colleague, Sean Harrison and friend, created that makeup. And apparently they were, he was in makeup for something like four or five hours a day. By the end of the filming, his skin was destroyed. But it's part and parcel of the job, unfortunately. Uh, and they, these actors are very much aware of this. Okay. So we got our layer of latex. Yes, very simple. Toothbrush, nothing complicated about this. And you have And you start rubbing away. Look at that. Gorgeous flakiness. Look at this. Now, this might look quite abrasive, but I'm actually rubbing the latex. I'm not rubbing my skin, ladies and gentlemen. How fabulous. So if the director says to you, I want you to create skin, dry skin or flaky skin after a sunburn. That is perfect. Look at that. Yeah. Now, bear in mind, you must remember where you've put the latex. Now, if you can't see it because your layer is only one layer, just get a little light and shine it with your phone and you'll see where the latex is. I mean, I can see it because I know exactly where it went. I tend to do that movement and it just lifts it. Try not to get close to the edge because if you go too close to the edge, you're going to lift the latex. Oops, too, see I went a bit too far. That was too excited, but that's fine. We can work with that. I think that's quite nice. Oh, it's a bit more. Yes. So very simple, very simple, gorgeous effect. This you could put an under bit under layer of. Uh, you could use your... One second. We could go to our Ben Nye Essential Effects palette and use our Burnt Coral. Which is that one, which is for sunburns. You could put that underneath and then do this effect. So this is flaky. Now, we're going to do the lips next. What is your go-to foundation for cold climates? For location, if it's crashed so easily, I would say airbrush is the way to go. Now, I would always say airbrush, 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 all the way. You will find a lot of um, filming. You don't need to find filming, airbrushing filming, because a lot of actors and actresses actually don't like the airbrush. For some reason, especially actors and actresses of a certain age. 
um, I work with quite a famous actress of a certain age and she basically said to me I don't like the airbrush I don't like the air on you know I don't they think they're inhaling the makeup they it just there's a symptom that there's like a block in your mind so but I would say airbrush um I would say anything that's very creamy so you want very cream based foundations if it's for cold climate so it doesn't crack um any kind of watery based makeup I would probably avoid the um so if I'm speaking on Meron for example, I would recommend the Meron Celebre creams. The Meron Celebre creams have um, uh, aloe vera in them. They stay hydrated, they stay moist. In a warmer climate, it can you have to keep powdering because it can look greasy. In a colder climate, as long as you buff it out, it will stay hydrated. Because that's what happens, the skin will lose hydration. Um, Jay, if you're still on the call, you work with a lot of more high street brands. I don't know if there are any brands you recommend. I mean, from a pro brand, I would say Meron is a great foundation. Um, Makeup Forever, the HD Makeup Forever ones are good. I would do anything that's cream, cream base. My my way to all would be cream based. So that's Meron Celebre from the Treasure House of Makeup um, website. They're really good. Um, also for skin conditions, if you're suffering with skin conditions, you want something that's going to replenish fluids. Meron Celebre is really good for that. Right, let's do the lips now. Let's do our gorgeous lips. Now you can buy a product which is called Chap Lips. However, you can just do it with latex. You don't have to do anything too exciting. You've got to try to save money wherever you can in this day and age. You really have to try to save money. Um, Again, oh. ah. yeah. The problem, Jay, when you're filming, sometimes you just don't get that. You don't get the um, you don't get the luxury of consultations. You've just got to go with it, especially if you're doing crowd. So you know, if you've got a hundred people to do in about an hour, you've got to work with something. I and I find in those situations. On a, on a colder climate, I tend to use creams because they retain fluid. On a warmer climate, I would probably go for water-based foundations. I would always go for an airbrush, personally, if, if you can. But a lot of film sets, you just won't, depending on the, of the, of the person's age. The, the good thing with, with, uh, the good thing with um, airbrush, if you use a silicon base pigment, done and dusted it's not going to crack so let it dry air dry already looks quite flaky because normally once it gets to this stage i would take away i would probably remove the um remove i would probably remove the um, get a new sponge but in this case i haven't which means now very gently Uh, the brush must be dry. Okay, I've got another one here actually. This one's from Ben. This one's the Delium, Delium brushes by Thomas Supernanza 110. Now on the lips, it can get wet, and that's not what you want. Okay. Fabulous, look at that, gorgeous. She's never looked better. Lovely, now.
For the lips specifically, I'm going to use a little bit of colour. So I am going with... Now, a lot of cosmetic brands... Oops. I've just roughed off all of my instructions, but this is the... Um, this is a Celebre SFX palette by Ben Nye. Hello Theo, we are doing a little bit of dry skin today. Theo Salisbury from Exilion FX Studio. Um, sorry, this is my Celebre Pro SFX makeup by Ben Nye. Sorry, Meron, Meron UK, Meron UK. Um, and what I do, so what I was saying is a lot of um, high street brands will keep selling you uh, cleansers that have no alcohol, etc, etc. That's all very well and fine. But in special effects, we use IPA all the time for painting, for prosthetics, for bald caps. It is part and parcel. Now, please always do an IPA test to see someone's not allergic to the alcohol. Some people, there are a few people in this world that are allergic to alcohol, poor souls, and they can't handle. Now, you can get alcohol activated palate activators who, which have no alcohol. Then bear in mind you will use alcohol for lots of other things, so sanitizing your brushes, etc., etc., um, even your ball cap, um, your your cap plastic might be activated by alcohol. So just be careful what you're using it with. I'm not allergic to alcohol, so fire away. So Meron, I've rubbed that off, but this is the Meron Celebre Plus SFX um, wheel. Get some alcohol. Spray the lid and the colours. Get a little, little dual fibre stippling brush. Bidelium, Delium, the B is silent. Delium SFX brushes by Thomas Supernant. Number 175. A bit of the red. Literally that's how much colour I've got. Okay. In the inside. So underneath, underneath where the lip is going, uh, you can also get your little, oops, your little brush, your Delium 153. As you can probably see by now, I only use Delium brushes. Do -do -do. much now if you let it bleed into the um, into the latex itself if you let the alcohol bleed in so if it's quite alcoholic it will bleed in and then blend the latex into the color Now again, you are using alcohols on the mouth, okay? So, because you are using alcohols in the mouth, just be aware of that. Around here, again, around the eyes, around the mouth. But, again, it's worth asking if the person has an allergy to alcohol. Or extremely sensitive skin. They are going to get... This is not the realms of consumer makeup. People, actors, actresses, models will go through essentially what they are paid to do. So there is, an, they, there is that expectation that when you're working in a film, TV environment, people know what this is about. They will be used to it. If they don't, you just need to, to explain every step to them and what might they get. You know, they might get a bit of redness after wearing a prosthetic. Just give them good skincare and aftercare advice. And again, remember, this is beginners, but actually this beginners technique I've used countless of years on film set all the time. Now, if you were a beauty makeup artist and you were brought someone with these lips, the challenge would be 
how to get rid of it. Now dry flaky skin you can use the um, very gently with a dry toothbrush you can actually take the, the dried skin away before applying a lipstick. But the best thing would be to use something like Atari Perkling by Elizabeth Arden. That kind of so that I always keep one, that one of those in my kit. Elizabeth Arden Atari Perkling has saved my life, ladies and gentlemen, many a time. Especially you know when you are on set at five o'clock in the morning, the actor arrives looking like a dog's dinner. Dry lips. They've been out on the road. Dry nose, all sorts. So bleed into the lip, please. Okay, bleed the colour in. Oops. And there we have it. So that's the effect this week, ladies and gentlemen. That is the effect. A very simple, gorgeous effect. As you can see, I used... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Jay. You always must keep talking to your client, client, actor, actress. As I said, thankfully, when you're working with actors, they should know what they do to what to expect, but not always. I try to tell them what I'm going to do and what they're going to feel. Um, especially with effects, if you go near the eye with anything like IPA acetone, when you're blending the prosthetic into the eye area, just need you need to tell them. You need to keep them informed. Jay makes a very good point. Thank you, Jay. Now, uh, what am I doing? Oh yes, so I was showing you the products. That's what I was doing. So I've got my Meron Pro Color Ring SFX. I didn't use it, but by Ben Nye Essential Effects Palette. These these two are cream base. But by diluting them, I created the alcohol way of colouring, which is aqua colour density. Uh, Meron liquid latex in clear white. It goes clear, as you can see. And my Delian brushes. These two. Delian 153. Delian 1575. These are the SFX Delian brushes by Thomas Supernand. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm Ian from um, Seventy Makeup Academy using my stay at home makeup kit from Treasure House of Makeup. At the moment, Treasure House are offering 25% off, which is the pro discount. They've opened it to everyone. It's available from the website. You can get all the products there, including the brushes I've used. Have a lovely day. Stay safe. If you need anything, Mark Hald, or hello, fabulous Mark, amazing model, amazing actor. If you need anything, if you need to reach out with any questions, or you just need to reach out to talk to me, or the Seventa, or the Treasure House kid, just send us a message. Lots of love. Bye. And this is what we look like. Thank you very much. Bye.